them up, drink them down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all Well, 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 well Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine little radio program and podcast known internationally as the world famous Smoking and Toasting. It is show number 195. And at this point, I think, Ian, we can safely say we're just about halfway to 200. Yes. We're, we're getting real, <laughs> we're real so close, close to that to that midway uh, point. We, are, we have a lot to talk about today, a lot to taste, and we're very excited about today's show because we're welcoming back to the studio second visit uh, for, uh, for Smoking and Toasting uh, for Jessica Kearns from Barrel Bourbon and, and Spirits. Mm. Jessica has brought a number of bottles, including a couple, Ian, that I uh, checked out a little bit. I haven't tasted anything yet, but I uh, checked out before you got here. I think you're going to be super excited. I got here like just moments ago, and <laughs> yeah. all I've seen is the side of these bottles. Yes, yes. Well, there's some very ex- there's a very exciting little bottle here. Jessica, tell us what, what this is going to be here. This so little that bottle? is um, batch 25. You guys will be the first ones besides me. It's, it hasn't it to, hasn't to even try. come out yet. Won't come out for what? Uh, looking at probably like September, October. So I'd just like to point out that on this show, we are now going to be tasting something that you can't get yet. Chris Hart, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's there's actually several things you can't buy yet. Okay. But okay. like batch twenty five, of course, you'll be able to find it at most of your normal barrel stops. Yeah. But um, there's a couple of things that I brought today that are single barrels that aren't even sold yet. So they're right. here in Texas. If anybody wants them, of course, you know how to find me. But um, yeah, they're not available yet either. So you're getting like half a dozen, half a half a dozen. And if they don't know how to find you, we'll pass that information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. well, we always, I always like to give uh, Chris Hart uh, a, a hard time uh, because it, it, quite frankly, is just so easy to do so. Uh, but he's his show, his whiskey neat show, which I love. But every time I, I tune into it. He's always drinking something that you can't get anywhere. I'm like, well, how does that help me? I, I know you're having a good time. Uh, right. So I give him a hard time about that. But anyway, we'll do a little. Most of what we're going to try today, if it's not out yet, it will be at some point soon, at least yes. in, in Texas. So uh, so we are at show number 195. We had talked, uh, of course, before all the pandemic stuff uh, started, about show number 200 being this big extravaganza and having everybody get together, inviting everybody who's been on the show. And, Ian, I've been racking my brain about what to do because we're now five episodes away being at the midway point. Uh, and we're, yes, it's amazing and how that so math works. I think, unless you can come up with a better idea, I think what we want to do is just delay the 200th show celebration. We'll do a 200th show, of course. It's about... What five weeks away now? Yes, but and we'll have to uh, we'll have to stage our bicentennial celebration for another day. Exactly. Well, once it's you know okay for us to do so, and maybe when there's a vaccine or whatever, whatever, whatever that point is where everyone w- would feel comfortable getting together in a group again, because you know I thought about well we could do it virtually, we could do it on Skype or Zoom, but th- but it's just not the same if we're not all passing things around no, and, yeah. and drinking together and trying each other's stuff and smoking together and all of that. So I, I feel like. It's probably. Best I had a, I had a solution, but it was it was a little awkward. I thought if we're passing around bottles of whiskey, bourbon, um, alcoholic beverages, we could just, as we pass them, spill a little on our hands, right, and it then would, pour it, ourselves some. You know, it would it. rub it on your face, maybe, yes. so that anything you exhale would, you know, be yes, yeah. Well, it, it, you're right. It would be a little messy, <laughs> but it would be fun. Uh, right? That would be the, that would be the good thing about it. So, uh, so Jessica is here from Barrel Bourbon. We've got all kinds of barrel uh, products. I say Barrel Bourbon. Is the company? Is it really more appropriate to say Barrel Spirits? How do you? When you say I'm Jessica from, what do you say? It depends on who I'm talking to. Okay. Um, it, it's it's known as Barrel Bourbon. Like our website, our emails, right. all of that. Social media is, is Barrel Bourbon, but it's. Technically, all falls under barrel craft spirits. Barrel craft like spirits. Whole... Okay. Well, well. So saying barrel bourbon isn't same wrong. Same thing. Even though we're going to have some rum. It's not going to. Okay. It's not going to offend anybody for sure. Well, Jessica is here. We have uh, a lot of other things to talk about. Uh, there's huge news in the uh, ongoing struggles for Texas craft brewers, and then it just got rescinded. So we'll tell you about all of that. The TABC can't make up his mind, and that's uh, frustrating for um, Texas craft brewers. We talked about it a little bit. 
Uh, and special thanks to last week's guest, Lenny Ambrose from St. Arnold Brewing. That was awesome. We had a great show with, with Lenny, and we talked about their struggles, St. Arnold. I mean, they're they're classified, I think, as a mid-size brewer yeah. at this point, uh, as craft breweries go. In fact, they won best mid-size craft brewery a couple of years ago in the uh, brewing competition. But uh, they recently had to lay off 75 employees, and it was because they can't operate the beer garden. When things open back up in Texas, you could do an outdoor space if you socially distance and what have you. And then they changed the the way they did the math on how how yeah. the alcohol versus the food is sold. So they, yeah, so you were considered a you were considered a restaurant if 51% <coughs> or more right of your income was from food sales, right. which is true at the brewery. Correct. At, uh, well, it's true at the beer garden at the brewery. Yeah, at the beer garden at the brewery. But so if you talk about their they sales as a whole. They, they changed it all of a sudden on everybody to where now your entire brewery sales mm-hmm. um, are what actually counts against that, not your space where you have your restaurant, which is actually a restaurant right. because you serve food, uh, which is a little silly. Like, Why would you count the beer that a brewery sells to the grocery store as, as part of right. what the beer garden takes exactly. in. Exactly. It makes no sense. This is TABC, and they've never done anything confusing before. Oh, no, not ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 they got they got more confusing yet. My wife has a tendency to send me, when she sees stuff in the news and stuff, she'll send me the stories yeah. uh, for the show, which is very helpful. So she sent me the story. I was all prepared to tell you today that the uh, Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission last week introduced an option for temporary license modifications across the state that would allow uh, you to go in, buy some beer to go, and then have a drink in the uh, beer garden area. Uh, But then last night they changed their guidance. Of course. So when I looked back at the article this morning, it had the update from last night's change, and now they say filing a temporary modification of licensed premises does not change how an establishment will be classified. So basically, at this juncture, breweries can be only to go, and customers cannot sit on the patio and drink the beer. Well, I think that they follow the same suit as uh, like the the people that engineer the um, the uh, power supply for any Apple product is always one foot too short. That's right. Um, and <laughs> they go to the same school of engineering, so to speak. And mm-hmm. I think that when they have a modification that actually makes sense, someone comes along and says, "Whoa, whoa, whoa guys, yeah, well, slow down. Well, that gov- makes sense. Government's we been can't doing do that. that. Yeah, government's been doing that for yeah. decades. So. I think that's just called yeah. bureaucracy. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so anyway, not great news for Texas uh, brewers. And, of course, every state's got those things going on. In, um, in Colorado, they've now banned restaurants and bars from serving any alcohol at all after 10 p.m. So we'll tell you what that's about and why. And uh, then we also have, you know, we also have a little bit of, uh, of good news. Uh, Pennsylvania reps are lobbying the president to eliminate cigar regulations, and that might turn out to be a really good thing. Uh, the Philadelphia craft brewer that uh, did this special beer to support Black Lives Matter, that beer is already sold out. So there's lots of little pieces of good news out there. So it won't be... It won't be a downer of a show, especially because we'll be tasting all these wonderful barrel craft spirits, and we have some interesting beers to taste today. Ooh, Oscar Blues, uh, who are from um, uh, Brevard, North Carolina, but opened a second brewery in Austin, Texas. So they've got wide distribution in Texas now. Um, they have a saloon juice, Texas Amber, that I haven't tried yet. I'm excited. We'll be trying it on the show today. Uh, and, and then... Um, Evil Twin Brewing out of New York City. The the brewery with the longest names yeah, for every right. beer ever. They have these super long and very interesting beer names. We'll be trying a double dry hopped, double IPA of theirs today called I Miss My Daily Commute on the L Train. <laughs> That's the name of the right. beer. Uh, and then finally, I know you're not looking forward to this at all, Ian, from Anchorage Brewing Company. Their Endless Ending. It's a barley wine and imperial stout blend. Well, that's going to be tough to get through. Yeah, I, I know. I, the thing I love about you, though, is you soldier on. I will. I, you, I, you I can best. drink my way through this. Yeah, you do your best. Plus, we have drinking news and a lot of other fun things to talk about. And Jessica always brings lots of spirits and, and fun things to try. And, oh, you got to look at this, Ian. She brought a dog toy. It's a barrel bourbon-shaped uh, dog toy. And as we found out a few moments before we went on the air, Ian discovered that it actually squeaks. 
So you can expect to hear that sound a number of times on today's show. Has this been sanitized? Can I chew on it? <laughs> I think it, I think so. Yeah. yeah. If not, we got. I hand, mean, if we got really hand sanitizer. Want to. Yeah, we could sanitize it with some barrel bourbon. Quite frankly, it would <laughs> probably probably make it one. That's what dirt. I need to do. Soaking. Could you imagine soaking that in barrel bourbon uh, and then just it using it like a teether? Yeah. Like a little child does. I, I love that just idea. Sitting there the whole Don't time. give it to your child. Teeth yeah, on it yourself. Not for kids. Yes, that's right. Uh, uh, you said a little whiskey in a bottle helps him sleep, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's, uh, that's the old that's saying. That's a little it? whiskey bottle. So <laughs> there's a song, Whiskey in a Bottle, right? That's right. right. Or Whiskey in a Jar. Oh. So tomorrow, tomorrow is National Tequila Day. So I thought, what better way to celebrate that than to have a lot of bourbon on the show I'm, today? So I, see, I, I like where your heart is. <laughs> at. <laughs> okay. Well, we I, I had thought about I had my weeks mixed up. I had thought we didn't have a guest this week, and Jessica was next week, uh, but. I was incorrect about that. So we talked about doing a Reposado blind taste yes. test. We will do that. It'll just be delayed for a few weeks as we uh, till we get like an open week. So uh, anyway, that'll that'll be fun. We'll look forward to it. But in the meantime, I'm looking forward to these barrel spirits. Jessica, the last time we had you on, that was that was one of the most fun shows we've done <laughs> in a very long time. Awesome. And and I I don't know if it's because you're a great guest or if it was just how much. You know how much you brought for us to sample. It was probably a combination of the two, if I'm to be completely honest. It's probably more the booze than me. Oh, I, I, would, just, I, would, I wouldn't say that. Booze. I wouldn't say that's that. That's too funny. So uh, interesting week for everybody. Uh, Ian, I'm assuming you did find time to smoke something interesting this week. I did, sir. Um, I went by the Casa de Monte Cristo uh, earlier today. Mm-hmm. Ooh, call from San Antonio. Don't know who it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably calling to tell me my car. Uh, Your car warranty. warranty is about to expire. Uh, about to expire. I, I, you know, the so which I always ask them, which car? Yeah. are you yeah. talking about? That's just like when they called to say, yeah, uh, we we noticed you have a high balance on your credit card. We can help you with that. And I and I always say, oh great, which which card is it? Yeah. I, I did that. I had the guy go, and he told me it was my Capital One card. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that one's got a high balance. <laughs> and it kept this guy going for like 25 minutes. And when I finally said, because I'd gotten to work by that point in time, when I finally said, um, hey, man, just to let you know, um, I don't actually have any of those credit cards. <laughs> Dude, this guy was angry at me. And I, I started he laughing. And I he's, bet he was. He called me a, a very bad word, time waster. And I started <laughs> laughing. I said, so you're calling to scam me, and you're mad because I'm wasting your time? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How offensive. I love like, it. That's um, nice. So I, I went by there, and I picked up a cigar that's been out for a while. It came out in uh, 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hadn't been aware of it, but I thought I'd pick one up and uh, try it. It's the uh, the aging room bin number one. Oh, cool! Uh, I don't know if you've had one of those. Uh, this is uh, it's called the uh, it's a five and a quarter by fifty four cigar, and it's called the C major. Okay, I don't know what the, the <clears throat> keys have anything. They had three. They had three different keys. Well, it's a B very, minor, C major, and G major. Well, the band on it is very musical looking. It looks like an old like. You know, an old piece of sheet music sort of a style to the. To the it band. does have a very manuscript kind of yep. thing, but I can also think too if they're going to have G mi- G major, B minor, and C major, then they should have just named it, you know, major, Phrygian, and Lydian. But I would because that would have made a little more musical sense. But I, I would guess a lot of people wouldn't know what that means. Maybe not. Yeah. Anyway, well, Lydian's easy. It's a major scale with a sharp four. Anyway, and people say that we don't teach you anything on this show <laughs> except drinking. <laughs> See that Ian just dropped knowledge, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you ever listen to Steve Vai's "For the Love of God," that's a good example of a Lydian mode. So here we are helping you curate your playlist. That's there good. You go. All right, so uh, this was. <laughs> did I just say all that? <laughs> the uh, the aging room bin number one has a uh, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Uh, this is twice in a row for a Habano wrapper for me. Mm-hmm. I think. I think it was. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, binder is a uh, Cuban seed Dominican fillers. Cuban seed Dominican as well. The appearance it has this large uh, manuscript looking wrapper, kind of a vintage style feel to it. It was pretty nice. Covers about seventy percent of the cigar. When you pull that off, it slid right off, really nice and easy. Uh, you have a second, a second standard wrapper, very classy, same kind of script on it, um, uh, with a little vintage vibe. The cigar itself is medium brown with kind of a velvety feel to it. Firm overall, uh, visible veins on it, slightly oily. Uh, very attractive cigar, if you ask mm-hmm. me. This is very nice. Uh, 
felt good in the hand, so to speak. Yep. yep. The uh, pre-light sniff on this is kind of subtle on the nose. Hints of mocha and coffee with earth and leather. It wasn't a real strong smelling cigar, but it was really pleasant. The pre-light draw on this, I used a clip. It had an effortless draw. Dark cocoa powder, sweet cappuccino, and leather is what I got right off of the, the pre-light draw on that. The initial light, tangy green peppercorn and poppy seeds. Nice. Like right up front, just like that. Uh, followed by sweetened coffee, like but but sweetened like like turbinado, like the raw sugar, you know, mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. that. It has a little bit different taste to it. Um, the first third of the cigar started off uh, sweet cream and cappuccino flavor dominates with the uh, mocha and tangy pepper spice following a real dry oaky finish on it. This was really really nice. I enjoyed that so much. Like those are all flavors that are right in my wheelhouse. Solid ash, perfect burn. The second third of this. The sweetness continues. Oaky wood moves forward. Mocha and coffee still very present. Slight green uh, peppercorn and spice finish the palate. Solid ash. Perfect burn. Awesome. The last third of this, big silky smoke makes great smoke rings. Again, I spent a little time trying to get a picture of me making a smoke ring, but I just made funny faces, really, (laughs) with smoke in front of me. So It never never quite translates, right? I get the wrong angle. Yeah, I get it. So... um, which which might have created the slightly uneven burn that started yeah, at the last been. third of this because yeah. I might have hotboxed it just a little bit because of that, but that actually corrected itself within a very short amount of time. So I didn't even think twice about that after the uh, after I put it down here. Sweetness and mocha and oak are all still prominent with toast uh, notes of toast coming in, making an appearance really really nice in the background. Uh, that toast with the sugar. Uh, uh, and sweetness on there was really nice. Poppy seed in the aftertaste. The pepper was almost completely gone on the last third of this, uh, which is strange because usually pepper builds up. Now, I did smoke this down a, a little bit further after I finished my review, and by the time it got down to burning my fingers, the pepper was back a little bit, but it never got real harsh or anything like that. It got more tangy, actually, yeah. kind of a nice way. This was uh, this was a super premium. This was $14.20. Nice. It's an expensive cigar. Yeah. Um, 5.5 on the price to quality. Oh, so you're giving it a little nudge above the... Absolutely. I've had cigars that were uh, $18 that didn't smoke as well as this. This was a great little cigar. And it lasted a while. Even though it was a a five and a half by... Or five and a quarter by 54, um, it smoked for a solid hour and 20 minutes. You know, Aging Room has really done some great cigars. I mean, they were very consistent. uh, And I know there was a lot of controversy about them winning cigar of the year last year but um i I gotta tell you pretty much everything i've had from them i thought has been worth the money yeah even from the more expensive ones to oh i love the the quattros i love you know know, they've done they've done great with their stuff quattros are great well i had a a little bit different uh cigar for me this week i picked up one of the la galera 80th anniversary limited edition Uh, this one's called the cortador there's two 80th anniversary limited, one's a torpedo, and, and then mm-hmm. one's non-torpedo. That's the Cortador. That's the one that I had. Um, the the wrapper on this was a, a little bit rustic looking, but and and by that I mean you know it, there were some veins and stuff, yeah, but it was so nicely box pressed that it was absolutely beautiful. It was just and they have a, a beautiful um, label on the cigar too. They really kind of that go is really all pretty. out I'm looking at on the, the label. On so uh, so it, very nice looked. Kind of like a, an ultra premium, super ultra premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, had that vibe about it. The wrapper is a Mexican San Andres wrapper. Uh, it's got a Dominican Corojo binder and Dominican fillers in it. So it's this is a primarily Dominican cigar. And these days I smoke, you know, more Nicaraguans than yeah. anything else. So I was interested to see how this would uh, how this would hit me on the palate. Uh, Pre light was all earth and leather. Little tiny hint of cinnamon in there is what I. Finally decided to guess that that was. You know, sometimes you can get a little spice and your brain's going, what, what well, is yeah, that? Well, yeah, trying to, trying to that? isolate yeah. so, it. So I went with cinnamon. I think that's right. Uh, I used my favorite punch. I lit it up, and it rewarded me with a really nice burst of spice, not a pepper bomb like some of the Nicaraguans do when you mm-hmm. first light them up, uh, but just a really nice burst of spice and some chocolate flavor to it. Uh, in the second third of the cigar, the spice continued, and it— Actually, started getting a little bit richer. Even that that spiciness is is the best way 
that I can describe it. Uh, there was also this nice sweetness that started to grow a little bit, and it kind of balanced the spice. Maybe that's why the spice felt like it deepened because it had this other flavor kind of balancing it out a little bit. Uh, the uh, flavors of chocolate and dried fruit were on the back of the palate the more that I smoked it. So not necessarily what I was expecting from a Dominican cigar, but really rich and very uh, very meaty kind of a smoke. Um, the construction on it, Probably as good as anything that I've smoked recently. It wasn't like razor straight burn, but it needed no tending. It totally, totally burned straight on its own, um, and uh, had a very solid ash. I'm pretty sure I was smoking this in my car with the top down, so I'm pretty sure that I could have held on to that ash for a lot longer. But I knew I was tempting <laughs> you knew fate. It was gonna fall yeah, on I you, knew yeah. I was tempting fate. Or the car. Or, or, or and in the car, you know, I'll 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 you know move it around in my hand, and a lot of times I'll bump it on the the top of the windshield where the windshield oh yeah ends, yeah right there and, the, and 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 then of course the ash falls on me so i know i'm clumsy enough that i decided not to tempt fate too much and I so eventually i tipped one it. thing i missed about my last vehicle is i had the sky roof right and uh i used to open that and i had the back windows open just right so that air would just flow right through and then when anytime i wanted to tip the ash i literally just stuck it straight just up in the it air straight up. yeah well when, <laughs> when you're driving especially that's yeah. an easy thing to do you just put it outside the window and poof off it goes um, but the construction was great. The last third flavors didn't change too much. It stayed uh, very rich, though. It was very complex. It was one of the uh, better Dominican cigars I've had in a while. Uh, very rich and complex, medium bodied. It was an eleven to twelve dollar cigar, so a little pricey. Not not you know too much. But I I'd smoke a lot in the eight nine dollar range. Yeah. Um, so I, I do recommend it though. Price to quality, I will give it a five, which means uh, I felt like I got what I paid yeah. for at eleven or twelve. And to be honest, I, I don't know if I was expecting to like it as much as I did. So I, I could easily give it a five and a half uh, without, you know, without feeling bad about that at all. So. Right. And for those of you listening, our price to quality scale is one to ten. Five being you get exactly what you pay for. Anything below five. Uh, you may be paid a little too much for it. Anything above five, it's punching above its weight class. That's right. what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's, that's the, the way we like quality. to say it. So, that's and right. and the, you know, the more expensive a cigar is, the harder it is for us to say it's above a five. Yeah, because you paid quite a bit for it. If it's an eleven, twelve dollar cigar and it gets a five, I mean, that's that's a that's a strong recommendation. It means it was worth eleven or twelve dollars. That's right. So anyway, there you go. All right, so we have, as I said, a lot to do. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what's going on in the world of, we, we promised this last week and never got to it, uh, a, a new uh, expert on cigars says that 95% of the Cuban cigars in the U.S. are fake. 95. Wow. So I'll tell you what his thoughts were on that. Plus, we get to tasting in our next segment. Uh, Jessica from Barrel is here, and we're very excited about and tasting. Uh, while we have her here, I want to start off the next segment, if you don't mind. I know this is a surprise for you. Okay. But I'd like to start off the next segment in how our palates develop and, and what we taste for when we're tasting bourbon or cigars and those kind of things. Because it occurred to me, we're 195 episodes into this. We're yeah. halfway to 200. And our, our cigar reviews... Mm -hmm. Are vastly different from the first episode. Like the first episode was like cigar good. Uh, yeah, I I liked <laughs> it. Tastes it. like cigar yeah, and I liked and it. Burning tobacco, great tobacco flavors. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, as I'll a give, slight hint of smoke. To I'll it. give you yes, a five. Yeah, right. we are we are a slight approaching slight smokiness to the cigar. <laughs> we, we are approaching though that obnoxiousness where it's like uh, I I I I observed a hint of lychee nut grown on the north side of the uh, of the mountain in you know uh, in. East Berlin, you right. know that that type of a little uh, bit of sunflower seed, but plucked just just a couple days before full right, ripeness. Right, right. Yeah, those yes. people, I've always said, those people you know need to be slapped. I, I, and, and you so know, uh, we're dangerously close to becoming. I, I those did people. pick out like terminado sugar. And you did. Like you did. I was gonna. I was gonna make. I it, might be that guy. I was gonna make an issue of it, but I decided. <laughs> you know, I like you. You're a friend. I can. I can roll with it. So, all right. So we'll be back and get started with the taste in in uh, segment number two. You're listening to Smoking and Toasting, and thank you, by the way. For checking us out on Facebook, Apple Podcast, uh, Google Play, all of the places where you get podcasts, and of course on YouTube. We'll be right back. Awesome. Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. Yeah, I know. It's it's just one 
one strum, but it's <laughs> great. It's awesome. It's great. It? Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. This is show number 195. And we are excited to be here. Barrel Bourbon is back in the studio. Uh, Jessica from Barrel is here. And, uh, oh, I wanted to uh, give a shout-out to my brother-in-law, Michael Adams, who has uh, uh, commented on the on the show notes. He's, as soon as we launched the show, he posted, let the day drinking begin. So uh, <laughs> so let's do that. Let's uh, let's get right to the uh, to the whiskey. Jessica, what, you poured us a couple uh, during the break. What are, we, what are we about to taste here? So the first one is something that you guys didn't get to try at all last time. Um, this is part of our whiskey collection. Mm-hmm. So this is it's a single barrel barrel whiskey, single barrel A one three five, and it's cask um, cask strength. Which just is like hard everything to say. we do is cask strength. Mm-hmm. So this is an eighteen year old Kentucky whiskey. So we're starting with eighteen. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hard 57. to 7% to come back after that. Yeah. It sounds like an Ian show. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to open with the barley wine at 15%. Right. Um, and uh, then we're going up from there. And then we're going up from there <laughs> exactly. Uh well, it's got it's got great nose. It's just Oh, it just says drink me. Uh, I I could I could go into what I'm this getting, is, but it just um, says drink me. This you can actually uh smell kind of the higher proof on it. It doesn't mm-hmm. Not in a bad way, but you can pick up that higher proof right there on the nose. It yep. doesn't drink anything like uh, that nose. Though. It smells good, but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. You don't feel that uh, that heat until way, way after the uh, it's, first sip. It's on the finish. Though. I'm getting a lot of chocolate and vanilla going uh-huh. on. Yes, definitely so. But I will just point out that the whiskey hug on this is phenomenal. <laughs> it's super warm and friendly. <laughs> yes, isn't it? it is. It's like. You know how some people are just better huggers than others? Yeah. This is a good hugger right here. This is there not a go. side hugger. No, no, not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> this is like full embrace right here. This is <laughs> almost a little too intimate, like from yeah. behind kind of. Right, right. It's like, okay, I hope you're one of my most favorite people, because otherwise this is this is a little awkward. Are we making it weird? I think we are. All right. A little bit. Good. A little bit. Wasn't that what we wanted to do is a smoking and toasting uh, the shirt that said whiskey hug? That's awkward? Yeah. Yeah. The whiskey hug. It's that, awkward. It's on awkward. The back. Yeah, uh, uh, but this is not awkward at all. This is uh, this is really delicious. Now, um, this is something um, I know we talked about this in the last segment. But is this available at uh, at retail? Will it be? It will be. Okay. Once it finds a home, it's up for adoption. So these are fairly small runs. Do you have a tendency to sell them all through like one place? Is that it? It depends on the product, right? So like. Um, there in that in in this case, this is a true single barrel. Right. So typically, it's one store would take that. Would take and that, that barrel. One store that, is, done. is done. Yeah. But you can have stores like Total Wine or or Specs that they may take one barrel and split between two or three stores. Right. Just so that you know they've got it spread out a little, and they're not buying. You know, Specs has something like two hundred stores now. They're not going to buy two hundred single barrels, right? right? There's no so way to really do that. Yeah. You just kind of spread them out. So the stores. I, I have a question. As a brand ambassador, like a lot of brand ambassadors sell um, an established uh, product that is like it's always like this, and every time you get a <laughs> bottle of it, consistent. it tastes exactly right. the same yep. and everything right. else. And you have the opposite. You have a product that is ever changing, always Every, evolving, right? Everything that you come out with is different from the last one. Does right. that mean you, uh, in some ways, have to start over with every single? Well, that is a tough job. So I feel like if you rep a brand that has like a super consistent product, say we only had Dovetail, right? Because that's our most consistent product. It's still made in batches, but it's our most consistent. Right type thing. So when you buy Dovetail, um, you pretty much know what you get. Much like buying yeah. any of the any of the big major brands, uh, like if you go buy an Evan Williams, you expect it to be Evan Williams every single time. Exactly. That's, right. That's a consistency. So if if we just had that, then you know I could go to every store in Texas and sell them the exact same thing each time. Right. Um, what I get the luxury of doing, which I really enjoy, because I could, I don't think like there's no part of my brain that tells me I could do that all the time. I feel like I'd get super bored, and I'd be like, okay, well, I've told everybody in the world about Dovetail, I'm done. Um, I get the pleasure of, hey, remember how you liked the bourbon last time? You're really gonna like this one, right? And it's it's just a whole new. Yes, of course I have Dovetail. Of course I have added malt. I've always got Infinite, but 
I also have all these brand new things every time I get to well, come by and see people. Again. It's kind of like an and artist. Then, like if if you lo- liked my last album, wait till you hear right. this one. You know, right, because it's going to be different. Right. right, but but it'll still have similarities because it's because, me doing right, it. Right, right, yeah. So so then the the next question is then in your mind when you're uh, when you get these new products in. Are you thinking to yourself, oh, okay, so this particular store sells these styles of things, so I think that this particular store is going to really like this. Do you separate things like that, or are you just pitching it to everybody? I have pretty much a set group of stores that I know they want it no matter what it is. Cause nice. It's barrel. And so that's usually my first round of emails, texts, phone calls, Facebook messages, whatever. Um, and then I go to the stores that... Sometimes they they get what they like, kind of. They're right, more right. selective about it. Um, or stores that they're looking for a certain thing. Like, I kind of just move through different categories, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And it keeps you with, there's something to do for the whole three months that you have that batch or six months that you have that right. release, right? Um, but it makes it so as by the time you're out of product, you're also out of stores, I feel like. I, I have to try to somehow do the math on that and make sure that like gotcha. I see every store in the case of these are still here but I, I try not to prioritize one store or another or one situation over another because yeah. I'm constantly having new stores that come to me and they're like oh my gosh I love barrel I've always loved barrel I just bought this store I need all of it what do I need <laughs> right. and I'm like okay cool we're going to be besties yes. let's go <laughs> how do I get it all yeah. so yeah well and for for listeners some of uh, Something that listeners a lot of times may not think about is stores have, I mean, we all kind of know this, but we don't always think about it. Stores have demographics. So depending on your customers and their taste, some stores are going to sell more uh, like overproof, very malty, chocolatey uh, flavored things. Some stores are going to sell maybe uh, more of your um, less overproofed or more um, run of the mill even style things. I mean there's just there's just and you never know, I think, when you start a store exactly what your demographic is. What your client tells you. Yeah. yeah, And exactly. they buy. And then there's also the added variable of you sell what you love. You know, so right. if you're a store owner and someone comes in and they say, Well, what's good in this category? Of course they're gonna go, well, check this out. You right. know. That's right. that's a part of it too. One of the things I've noticed about Barrel is that you guys have done a very good job of getting a really decent amount of shelf space when i go into a store and i see you know mm-hmm. that they're carrying your whiskeys you seem to have for a for a craft distillery you seem to have a really nice chunk of the shelf uh, i hope i'm not overstating that but no. but it's a it's a pretty cool thing and i you try have a lot really to, you i have try a lot really that, hard on that yeah <laughs> yeah you really it's do. a really hard sell because like um our bottles are the only kind that are like this right like right. You're, you don't see five other products in the same bottle and it's also an extremely wide bottle so i so know when i'm asking yeah. a store hey will you carry the new line along with what you already have will you add this bourbon in i think you know infinite would go really well with what you have and what your demographics are um i know i'm asking them for a lot of valuable space because mm-hmm. um, it's very easy to just turn these sideways and they're right. you know and, a quarter of the size but then who's gonna pull them out and look at them you know so. right nobody does so that's part of it is just like kind of a silent you know gentleman's handshake that i understand i'm asking you to carry six absolutely massive side to side bottles but I promise you, they're going to do well. They're, well, they're and maybe amazing that's, products. Maybe that's a part of why it always seems like you have such a great chunk, because your bottles are a little wider, and because they're all the same shape, you you kind of see that. Your eye sees that in the, well, in your the eyes, shelf. Well, your eyes tend to focus on things that are alike in yeah, a pattern. Right, right. So when you're, when you're looking at a spreadsheet, you can very easily, without even thinking, you can see the cells that are all the same, mm-hmm. and then maybe some that need to be changed. Right. This one's a little different over here. But you're going to automatically pick out a grouping of something that's similar. And that's one of the things I really liked coming into Barrel was that they're all the same. Right. So for me, it's memorizing which colors are which, which numbers represent what, mm-hmm. and well, that kind of thing. Well, it's much more interesting, too, the fact that you have so many different expressions. And your bottles have a uniformity to them. But then again, they are all actually different. Whereas if you walk up and you look at Jack Daniels, they may take up the same amount of space, but it's all the exact same bottle side to side. Right. right. And there's a reason that they don't put 
uh, those big brands like that as just one bottle with a bunch stacked behind it because right. they want to show that presence. They want to bring that. Right. And it's, that makes a big difference. But these bottles are absolutely gorgeous, too. So, so speaking of a little bit different, you poured us a second one. <laughs> and uh, what is uh, what is it and what's different about it from the first one that we sent? So sampled? it is from the same grouping, I guess is what you'd call it. Mm-hmm. Um, same line of products. This is barrel whiskey, but it is a private release. So the difference between a single barrel and a private release is a single barrel is exactly what it is. It's a single barrel. We bought a barrel. That's that barrel. Um, Any of our private releases are blends or finishes, something that we put a barrel spin on, right? Okay. Um, So we took the majority of that and blended it, the 18 year that we tasted first. And then in this case, we... Made me scared. Um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that noise of slap in the bottle. We took that as our base and then um, finished it in a Jamaican rum cask. Oh, nice. And this was like one of my favorites when we first tried them in Kentucky. So mm. I'm, I'm kind of sad. This one, again, is a one that doesn't have a home yet. Um, but That's terrific. This one's it's, it's interesting one of my on favorite. the nose. It's yes. a little... Um, I want to use the term funk, but that's not in a bad way. Funk is in like Isaac Hayes, like in a great, awesome way, you know? Right, right. Like, uh, it's got a very different nose to it um, than you would expect. It's, it's, I guess, that that, uh, influence of the barrel. But I really love um, taking a really quality whiskey like this, finishing it in rum barrels. To me, it adds that extra depth of flavor that really, really works for my There's palate. There's a spice to this mm-hmm. um, that you immediately pick up on. Maybe that's what I'm smelling. That's what I'm calling the funk is a little bit of that spice. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. A lot of people that talk about Jamaican rum always use the word funk when they talk about it. And well, you think it's of just Jamaica as a funky place. Yeah, you know? it's just well, interesting that think, that's the choice word for a lot I of people. I think funk, gets a, as, a, as a word, gets kind of a bad rep because we think, oh, that's funky but not good. But I mean, I like the funk. Yeah. You know. We want the funk. That's right. <laughs> Gotta have that funk. Gotta have that funk. Yeah. That's that's the way we feel <laughs> about that's it. Right. So no, I, I think it's I, I think it's of, of the two, I like the first one. I love the second one. This is just the way my palate works, this really hits me right where I like, you know? This the uh the uh alcohol's a little more present mm-hmm. on the especially on the back of the flavor on this and on the back of the tongue it lies there on the back of the tongue and has a little heat in the mouth, which is really interesting and fun, too. Yes, it, it has a little more heat before the warmth of the whiskey hug, but you do get that hug on it as well. It's maybe... I imagine this with a nice, uh, smooth Connecticut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think you could even go almost up to a medium body with yeah. this, and it would and it would work. As long as the cigar's not like a powerhouse, you know, it would really work work well with this. Very nice. Very nice. Now, this one... Will this be available? Is it available? It's not available now. Like you're, you're like looking I said, for a it, home for it. it you said it needs. It's up for adoption. Okay. Like I feel like we need some Sarah McLaughlin paying in the background with like sad puppy eyes on them. <laughs> oh man, no, um, no, that'll make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need. I they're don't need, super good. They're I don't super need these great. Lonesome they're house of trained. Yeah. They just need. They just need a home. They just need a place. <laughs> right. Some bottles of whiskey are just looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're giving it love. Right? I think I think we're loving on it right now. So yeah, somebody adopt this one. This is. Uh, you know, back in my old days doing radio, we used to once a week bring on a puppy and and or a cat and and you know encourage someone to come adopt it. You know, they do that on some of the morning news shows on TV and stuff. Now, um, that's uh, I think we should do that with whiskey. <laughs> Speaking of should. adoption, I just got a cat. Oh, you did! It just wandered into the yard one day and and said, and my me. wife looked at it and I knew I was doomed right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you already have. Uh, so now I have a cat. Yeah, a little Siamese, Siamese thing, and um, <clears throat> they and, have no uh, personality at all. They're really quiet. Yeah, and... They're very talkative. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Like, what is that cat meowing? No, she just she likes to talk she to the likes dog. To talk, yeah. <laughs> she likes to talk to my wife. She likes to talk to me. Sometimes she's just talking. Well, that's like that's like my greyhound. She doesn't bark almost ever. Like I've only heard her bark maybe a dozen times in all the years I've had her, and it's if she's startled or or you know something. You know, it's something really going on. She doesn't just bark at a noise or a sound, but she loves to talk. She wanders around the house, rah, 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 like <laughs> carrying on a conversation <laughs> with I don't know who. Uh, so yeah, that reminds me of Siamese, though, because they, they talk just to talk. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, good luck getting a, a decent night's sleep if yeah. he's decided to. Well, yeah. you know, so I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, the dogs and cats don't sleep on the bed with That's me, good, and yeah. it's not because I have an issue with that. It's just that, like, the dog will sit there and, I, like, wake up in the night and start scratching or something mm-hmm. like that, and I'm like, ah. Yeah, I just don't deal with that yeah, at all. I, I don't. So I they don't get banished. It. it made my wife very sad, but they get banished to the comfy couch. Well, the I don't cat, feel that bad. About oh it. no, the, the yeah, cat has exactly. found a home. Now we just need a home. We just need for a home the private for release. Right. Uh, yes. uh, call now. Operators are standing by. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. uh, before we take a break, Ian, we got to try this uh, this saloon juice. The saloon this is, juice. This I, is from Oscar Blues, this. and I have a feeling that this one originated out of Austin because it's got Texas on the can, Look and it's this. a Texas amber. Does, I mean, does that say uh, a little bit of an ode to Lone Star? Or yeah, what? I think it does. I think it does. <laughs> and it's called saloon juice. saloon juice. Yeah. So I'm, right. I'm wondering. So I push some cups over there towards you. That it, maybe you can uh, give us all a. Ooh, nice. I'll consider That's it. Very nice. That. That worked, and while you're doing that, I'll just add. Nice. Yeah. So, see, I'm gonna hear that for the next few days. Yes, you are. You definitely until, until my dog, with precision, takes the, uh, the squeaker, squeaker out. out of I don't it. know how they find the squeaker, but they they just they know. It's they just know plastic. How, like that blows my mind it. that they know where to yeah, dig in the I toy. Know. Yeah, they find it. Like they zero in on it. It's a wonderful, wonderful skill that they have. Uh, so, all right, two very good whiskeys so far. Now we'll see uh, how the Texas Amber from Oscar Blues does. It is kind of interesting to me oh, that uh, it's kind of interesting to me that they are taking that big of a Texas position because you know they're not, they didn't originate as a Texas. Beer, no, I but love they've had, they've had the Austin Brewery open for a while. I now, love so. Oscar Blues though; they make such yes, great beers. Do. Their they Old really Chub do. is oh. a favorite of mine. And they're, Dale's Pale Ale. Dale's that's Pale a, Ale is outstanding. That's a standby. Um, so. They have so many good beers. They're um, what is their stout? The um, mm. totally blanking on it right now. We'll think of it, but try this and tell me it this isn't is, an ode to Lone Star. It's a uh, yeah, a lot, but it's a lot better than the beer you gave me last time I was here. What do we? Do you remember what it was? <laughs> Something horrible. That you like. <laughs> I don't think that was did, its name. Did we like it or uh, no? And you did, we no, all none of us didn't like it. it. Oh, and it wasn't my lord. It was a beer. <laughs> was it like a? I want to say it was like a Mexican beer, like oh. a Dos Equis. Oh, was it the Corona kinda... Light or whatever No, it was, the, or... it was the, the worst beer we've ever had on the show, the Dos Equis Mexican uh, Pale Ale. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, it yeah. Is, that that, that is good. a horrible beer. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm glad that I could have the show that you said we might have had the most fun on. But we, but, but we I was also a, here for the worst beer. See, so that says, now, <laughs> that says a lot about now, you, Jessica. We could have invited you for our uh, malt liquor taste test. Oh, my God. Oh, I would yeah. love that. <laughs> you know? I have a shirt that says something about, uh, it's got like all the MD 2020s on them. Oh, nice. And it's like something about, this was not the 2020 I prepared for. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my brew club just uh, uh, put out the design for our new 2020 shirt. Yeah. You know, you see me wear my CCSD shirts. And uh, so the front of it has our mascot on it, and hanging from one of its horns is a, a, a mask. A mask, yes. And then on the back, it's just a dumpster fire that says 2020 oh, on God. the dumpster. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What is your uh, thought on the on the saloon juice, This is Ian? good. This has got a little uh, little bit of honey flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It's like... Uh, Does it remind you of a Lone Star, though? A little bit. Yeah. It's, it's very drinkable. Like I like the malt profile that just rolls all mm-hmm. the way through to the back of the palate. It's pretty amazing, actually. Mm-hmm. This, to me, like, I'm going to buy lots of this. It's really good. This it's is really good. This is outstanding. I could, I could, what is the percentage on this, too? I don't think it's very high. 4.5. So. Yeah, 4.5. Yeah. Yeah. So I got my, uh, I got my uh, camping trip coming up in a few weeks. I oh, see, this would be a perfect, a be a perfect camping yes. trip uh, uh, beer. Everyone uh, else is going to have Lone Star. I'm going to have this. Well, I tell you what. While you do your camping trip and take some of this along, I'll go stay in a really nice hotel and take some of this along. Because to me, like it that's, works either way. that's camping for me. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to be glamping this year because a lot of the campsites are shut down. Yeah. So we ended we ended up. Uh, I think we're going to do a couple. Uh, cabins and stuff that are air conditioned well which i'm quite okay with yeah yeah i was gonna say i'll be roughing it because the place that i have in mind there's no room service after midnight oh so it's gonna be tough yeah but we'll figure it out all right gonna take a break we'll be back uh for more uh barrel spirits and a little more beer in fact in the next uh segment we'll be tasting a double dry hopped double ipa 
from the uh, genius brewers at Evil Twin Brewing in New York. It's called I Miss My Daily Commute on the L Train. And this we'll beer goes back to the uh, <clears throat> bourbon oh, you went back very to the, well. Right, I'll try that when we go into the break. We'll be right back. <laughs> it's smoking and toasting, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, drinking news on the way, too. Drinking news in the works, sir. Yeah, it goes, it goes back to the bird. Welcome back. It is smoking and toasting. We are so glad to have you guys here for show number 195. And we're so glad to have Jessica from uh, Barrel uh, Bourbon Craft Spirits here. Uh, there is a brewery in Philadelphia, uh, a, craft, a craft brewery that uh, brewed a really interesting beer called Black is Beautiful. And it was designed from its inception to be something to support the Black Lives Matter movement. That beer is now completely sold out. Awesome! Everything that they have uh, they have released has has been sold. So, um, just wanted to give a uh, a tip of the cap to them. Uh, in fact, there was a Facebook post apparently in the Philadelphia Home Brew Club advertising the whole project, which is a nationwide brewing movement, uh, and basically brewing with a cause, and it's sold out. So, if you if you manage to get your hands on some. Uh, do us a favor, hold us back a, uh, a can. We'll trade you something else for it, so we can we can try it on the show. Cause we uh, we would absolutely absolutely love to do that. Ian, you talked about um, uh, wanting to just have a discussion about our palates and and how they how they developed and and how how that works for for whiskey in particular. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Well, whiskey and cigars, and, I'm, I'm and just in you. general, food, food in general, it doesn't matter. Because I get asked a lot of times when we're talking, you know, when we talk about cigars and whiskey uh, with like friends and stuff, they're mm -hmm. like, "Oh, this guy knows a lot about it and gets a lot of flavors out of stuff." I wouldn't even know how to describe that. Well, I just, so I just want to talk and address that a little bit. Is um, it starts with you know your first cigar, your first whiskey, and a lot of times what we have is no idea what we're even looking for. Right. And that's the biggest thing. Like when, they, when we talk about an experienced person is they know what to look for. They have an idea. You, like you said earlier, you uh, you tasted a flavor in that cigar and you uh, identified it as cinnamon. Finally, yeah. Finally. And it's interesting, like you say cinnamon, because when you think of a cigar, you, you take a cigar out and you light it up. One of the last things you ever think of is cinnamon right. or I'm, nutmeg. I'm going to taste or, nutmeg in this. Or yeah. uh vanilla or i mean even coffee or whatever coffee is one of the more obvious flavors that you get in a lot of cigars but uh but if you don't know what you're looking for a lot of times your palate is just casting around in the dark so one of the ways that you can help develop your palate mm -hmm. is to learn from people who have done this and learn from other people and those kind of things so when when we're tasting a whiskey they're by this point in time, we're 195 episodes into this thing, um, and when I taste whiskey now, I already have at least before I try a whiskey a preconception of what might of, be in of there, of what whiskey is likely to taste, and like, that yeah. makes a big difference because now I know some of the things to look for. Like whiskey is a lot of times going to have vanilla, and it's going to have that a lot of those flavors because of the barrel. You know, if you age something in a barrel, there are certain flavors that are just going to pop up. Have you found this to be true? Yeah. And so, therefore, you look for those flavors. And a lot of times, if you're looking for something, you'll find it. Right. You know? Yeah. And like, that, like I tell my, my students, my kids, they're like, I couldn't find my book. Did you look for it? No. <laughs> if you don't no. look for it, guess what? You won't find it. Well, it's an easy thing to do is to maybe it's something you've heard Ian or I talk about getting a particular uh, aroma or flavor out of something, or or you could if if you are smoking a cigar, just go on the internet and look at a review that someone has done of that cigar and notice what they found. Then you can search for those. You can go, oh yeah, I get where there's maybe a hint of chocolate in this or whatever. And sometimes whatever you don't. Be. And sometimes you don't, right? Your palate may be different. Everybody's but. palate may be different. Also, that guy might have had you know, uh, a ham sandwich for lunch and you had fajitas. Right, exactly. Like, those things affect your palate. And when I know? taste tequila, uh, baby, I still see you on the floor in that sorority T-shirt. <laughs> same one you wore when we were sky high in Colorado. I feel, I feel like there's a song going uh, there, on. There might here. be. I'm sorry. <laughs> when you said, when I taste whiskey, was, that's where my brain went. What was your personal journey like on this? Um, when I started drinking bourbon, it was very much 
that's bourbon. Okay. Yeah. That's not tequila. That's, that's where it starts. Not vodka. Right. Like I could tell the different kinds of, of liquor and that was pretty much it. And then the more I started to notice that I liked bourbon, the more I was like, well, I really like this one. Well, this one's like the same price from the same place. It's got to be the same, right? Like it's just a different brand. It's kind of like Target milk versus Walmart milk. It's, right. it's the same milk. No. But that's not the case. No, not, not at all. Not, yeah. yeah. And I, I discovered like very quickly just because this is a bourbon made in Dallas that is good does not mean that that weeded bourbon is the same as this one made in Austin that's says it's the same mash bill. There's there's something different that right. goes on there, whether it's the, the char number on the barrel or how long it was aged or where it was in the Rick House or, or whatever, right? What have you? I think there's so much. It. There's so much that you learn as you taste because at first, like you're right, you're like, okay, yeah, that's bourbon, but it it takes kind of kind of like staying with it. It's the same way, like if you sort of grew up on a diet of you know hamburgers and French fries, and then you go out for a really nice chef dinner, you may appreciate that the food is good. But you, your palate hasn't learned to detect the flavors and stuff in it yet. Right. As you continue to eat, you know that kind of food, you'll begin to go, "Oh yeah, I taste that flavor that you know that he used, you know, uh, whatever chef's butter but, or whatever." But you know? let's let's back up and go even simpler than that. If all you eat is hamburgers and French fries, you have a favorite, right? And not every hamburger is the same, and not every well, French fry is true. the same. Like who has the best French fries and why? Yeah, and, and why are they good? Yeah, those what, kind of what things. Is like about those, them? Yeah, you start you start picking it out because you get familiar with it, and that's the whole familiarizing yourself with it. And that's what you're talking about, where you try different brands of the same thing, and you try a bunch of them. And that's the whole bottom line: is if you want to get good at this, try a bunch of them. Yeah, and by the way, it's a really fun way to get good at something. Right. Practice. Yes. It, you just it's not have one of, to it's practice. practice. It's not one of those things where you go, oh, yeah, i got to practice my piano today. You know, uh, Alan no. Denny says no. you're in his chair, by the way. I'm in his chair? <laughs> <laughs> I bet yeah. he moved my chair at his yeah. place because I yeah. haven't been in so long. That's, that's, I haven't that's been there the in a while sad, either. Right? I've been threatening yeah. to come down there. That's, uh, that's when... Uh, that's when you know that there was something a little funky about that chair. Who That's knows what Alan did to it? That's why I can't, I can't quite it. sit in it right. Yeah, yeah. is because Alan. Alan is to blame. Alan has marked it with his presence. <laughs> That's what it but was. But of course, nobody, <laughs> nobody cares about that guy. So, <laughs> uh, Jessica, what's this first one that you poured for us for this segment? So the first one I poured is Barrel Bourbon Batch Twenty Four. Okay. So I don't want to get this wrong, and I haven't talked about it a whole lot. This okay. smells oh, it outstanding. Smells There's a little delicious. maple syrup yes. in the smell. Right. Mm. It's um, 9 to 15-year-old Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana barrels. Wow. Blended together in true barrel fashion. This is really good. This is this is just like, I want to pour this on pancakes. Oh, yeah, it tastes like it smells. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing in this case. This one, yeah. Oh, my gosh, it finishes so nice and yeah. mellow, watery. It's, and-, <laughs> and it's very mellow, too. It's not, yes. uh, you know... Uh, you, you can tell that it's got a little heat to it. Boy, this is sippy but it, whiskey. But it drinks mellow, yeah, in a really good way. <laughs> this love, love to pair this with a cigar. Yes, this would go with. <coughs> when you were describing so what things. you had said, you tried earlier this mm-hmm. week at the very beginning. The whole time, I was thinking of all the tasting notes I've written down for batch twenty-four. Uh huh. And to me, it's like it was th- like knocking the same little boxes off. Right? So interestingly enough though, I would also say if you taste this again, there's almost a little tobacco-ness to it. Yes, as well. there is. Maybe that's why I was saying, oh, this would pair well with a, a cigar because I was getting a little of those tobacco notes, some great malt, and like you said, the minerality on the finish is so pleasant. It's so appealing. Mm. You know, it's interesting cuz it's 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 a darker uh, yeah, color. It's, uh, but it's not it's not real oily. It's not a lot of things that I would expect to have such a robust flavor, and it's it's like the mouth feels even a little thinner overall, not in any kind of bad way, but it's not. Uh, it's not. It super, doesn't look like what you. Yeah, it's not super what viscous. You're getting yeah. On, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it. It might look and and mouth feel a bit thinner, but the flavor is so. Oh, it's, full. it's bold. Yeah, very bold. Very nice. That's very nice. And this is lot number twenty four. Batch twenty four. And my you ongoing can question: it. Can this, we find this it? This one yes. has a home. That that one is home all over the state, um, and and all over the nation actually. And uh, around about 
85 to 95, it's, I want to say. It's very good. Uh, where can people who are not in Texas, because we're based in Texas, we talk about Texas a lot, but we have listeners everywhere. Where where can people, uh, what other states can people find Barrow in? We're in, I think, 46 different states now. Oh, that's so pretty there's, big. So there's yeah. a few that we're not. Mm-hmm. But um, we're if talking you ever, you, Oklahoma. I, we're in Oklahoma. Oh, are you? Like we, yeah. yeah, that's one of the states I do know. I just guessed actually. Yeah. Um, I was being silly. Yeah. There's there's yeah. a few. I want to say they're more like the north part. Yeah, weird demographic kind of somewhere up. There. I don't know. Everything's north to so me. So hard I've to find in my not North yeah. Dakota. Yeah. When you, when, when we, you're we're in, in North Dakota though. Oh, see, like, I can't make a good guess today. Yeah. But but it is true. When you're in Texas, Arkansas is up north. Yeah, everything's yes, you know? up north, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. and now that I live in Houston, which is like exceptionally, like unless unless you say you're from like the tip of Miami, you're you're north. Right. Like that's yeah. that's Dallas it. is north. Yeah. Yeah. If you if freaking you're Yankees here. up in Dallas, right? <laughs> like right. <laughs> everything's north of me. When people um, tell me they live in the woodlands, I always say, "Oh yeah, what's Dallas like?" You know, because <laughs> right? that's that's what it seems like to me. If it's the, just you're right next north. to Centerville. Yeah. Right. Um, but if you ever need help and you're in any other state besides Texas and you can't find Barrel. Email us, and we're always happy to... You'll tell to, them where, where to find in your you state. We can tell what's closest to you to go pick it up. And the website is... BarrelBourbon.com. BarrelBourbon.com. Okay. Barrelbourbon. Okay. That's good to know. This is uh, this is really outstanding. And, and the second one now this that you poured us... This is batch 25. So we just had 24. This is 25. So, so I just want to let you know. Uh, these, are, these are all batches. I have batch 20 in my house, and I have about this much left, mm-hmm. and I covet it because yeah. it's so good. It's so good. It's, that's yeah. like the chocolatiest thing ever. I will right. just mention, I think I think you took home the batch, tw- uh, mm-hmm. the batch 20. Mm-hmm. I took home the rum. And that is currently being hoarded. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going real, I real was, I was really curious to run. wonder where those yeah. bottles yeah. went and yeah. like um, how far they lasted, like but, if they lasted but, to the next time. So, or if that was why I got back on the show was because, because you didn't we were have running any left, out of barrel. Right? Mine, <laughs> mine slows down exponentially because I'm like, ooh, this is good. This is good. It's good. Ooh, I'm getting a little low. Oh, getting a little low. So oh, it starts okay. slowing special down. Gazing, special gazing. Special gazing. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> well, I, I will just mention that, uh, and we'll talk about this when we uh, get when we taste some of the rum earlier. But I didn't realize when we tasted the rum on the show the last time you were here, I didn't realize actually until I got it home and tasted it alongside some of the other rums that I have, how different it was in its overall, just in, in everything, flavor, how how much heat it brought, all of that. It was a very, so it's one of the most, and I have a lot of rums, it's one of the most different rums in my entire rum collection, so it's it's the one I it's the one I bring out when I have someone over. Although you don't have anybody over these days, but <laughs> should I have someone over who is more of a whiskey drinker than a rum drinker, and I want him to try a rum, it, it's the one I, I would pull out because I, I, I think it's a a gateway rum. I don't know that we've drinkers. tasted everything yet. Uh, yeah. Well, this is the second one for this. This is lot. my uh, favorite of the day so far. So this really? is lot twenty five. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this and is tell big. me why. It's so big. we have five to nine year old weeded bourbons, and then thirteen to fifteen year old corn forward bourbons in the yes. blend. This is sweet. It's spicy. Wow, that's good. Um, the that's really good. Spice is what really, really attracts me to this. Mm-hmm. Um, you would have to be selective with your cigar to pair with this. Mm-hmm. But that's the what the whiskey sp- sniff is all about. My that's friend. right. But the spice is what really attracts me to this because this has a lot of that spice in it that. That uh, it's this is not what you'd call like a super smooth. It's spicy. It's interesting. It's got cinnamon. It's got the uh, the wheat influence in there is big. The corn sweetness is right there. I mean, it's it's good. Vanilla, yeah, vanilla. It is definitely a bourbon though. Like you know, almost like a caraway seed kind of thing going on mm-hmm. in there. Okay, guy. Yeah, caraway seeds, huh? <laughs> but only grown and only grown. And, and, uh-huh. and harvested at midnight on right. the backside of a yeah north facing <laughs> yeah. side of a hill, and, and only harvested by uh, harvesters who've been doing it for more than thirty five years. <laughs> That's right. yeah. Virgin hands, yeah. like they've <laughs> never touched caraway seeds right. before. <laughs> Uh, to not contaminate these. Maybe I'm well, carried um, away, but I, I feel like I taste I, that. 
I was super excited when I got this, and I, I of course, had to try it before I brought it here. But um, so is this something you just uh, are trying? Uh, yeah, like, like this is the only this bottle in Texas. Okay, so this I, I this just want to show everybody. <laughs> she poured this out of this small sample bottle, so this is obviously not in stores yet. All right. No, but it will be, right? We're looking at like I, I want to say maybe end of August, but September, October for okay. sure. Okay, and for those of you who have now moved into the 20th century, Josh that are actually watching this particular show <laughs> because he let me know on my phone. You yeah. see exactly what I'm looking at. It's, it's, looks, it's a small like medicine flask. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's really nice. I feel like I should be like, Dylan, just take a little sip. You know? Yeah. When yeah. they're empty, I just refill them. And I'm put just, them in my I'm just awesome. watching you because I kind of expected you to slip that in your hip pocket. I kind of wanted to. to. Yeah. If it was not the only little bottle yeah. I had, yeah. I would I, be nice. So I'm always I, willing to share, but like this is This, this is mine, one may not be for everyone, but it's spicy, and I really, really it's like really, it. Really and it has a lingering heat, and it has a lingering sweetness on the back of the tongue and it's it's really really nice i get infinitely more weeded bourbon notes because of course mm -hmm. it's part of the component of this that, that makes up the majority of the blend but um i have a really hard dead set feeling that i'm going to end up with a headache about how many emails i get that they can't find it like i can't find it anywhere where do i find it i can't get it here where is it and I'm going to have to be like, oh, copy, paste. It's sold out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but Here's tasting notes on batch 26. You but, know, right. like. But so so this, the reason you have only this one is not because it hasn't come out yet, but because it's gone? It's not bottled. It's not bottled. It's okay. not like ready on its way here. It's not to this stage. So so how So long? we dipped that directly into the barrel before you got here. It was one happened. of those there's there's uh well it's a batch so it's it's so, not in a barrel anymore. So the barrels all got dumped I, I like the, my the, visual yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how yeah, long one of those kind of things. We'll help answer some of the questions for you though. How how long is it likely to be before someone can buy that? Um as soon as we can get it here, of course. But, like, but uh, what does August, that mean? Is it, is it, okay, into August, August, September, September okay. October. So, so you're not talking there, next yeah. year. You're no, talking no, 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 in, no. In, it'll, in, it'll be soon. Okay. We go, we go in numerical order, and normally mm -hmm. um, we have about four bourbon batches a year. Yeah. One rye batch, possibly a rum or a whiskey. But right. um, so 24 is in on. stores now, mm -hmm. and 25. You're talking August or September. Yeah. All right. So there, we answered the question. Ho hopefully, yeah. that'll cut down on the emails a little bit. It's it's more like. Once everybody gets to try it and they've bought a bottle, they've gone to one of the tastings, you know, we've done, we're, we're, I'm talking like pre-COVID when I used to go to the stores and just hand out right, free right. samples, right? Um, I would always get a random email from somebody that picked up my card while they're on the barrel. Oh, I went back to the store and I can't find it. And those are like the worst emails for me mm. to answer because I feel like they're they're like heartbreaking. I'm like, I'm so sorry that you loved I'm it. Sorry to let yeah. you down. You can't get it now. Right. Like I don't even have any bottles except in my private collection, and you're not getting those because I don't like you that much. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, I don't but, write that in the email. But, but honesty is important. Right. And, that's and, you know, the honest uh, truth. I, I believe that to be true. Transparency hey, you know is thinking? super important at Barrel. What? I like that. Oh, I like what you're thinking. I like how you're thinking. That's my I like process. this label that's on this. Yeah, this is from Evil Twin Brewing. These guys, not only do they brew some very creative beers, uh, and this is a double dry hopped, double IPA, not only do they brew some really creative beers, but they also are one of the most creative beer namers Oh, yes. uh, of anybody. Do you remember what that one super long one was? Nobody you know? can. Uh, Even yeah. they can't remember. I because need to actually just write it down and email it to myself so I can always <laughs> go back and, and find, because I don't now remember what because show Because at on, some but. point in time, they sat down and said, we need a name for this beer. And they said, it's only got 16 words in it, so we need to add a couple. Only? Right, yeah. And so their beer There was names one, are, the Christmas beer was the funniest right. one. Uh, and their beer names are all just incredibly long and very funny. Like, they're they're... Hilarious, but Evil Twin, obviously, they're in New York, and no one in New York is riding the subway right now. Yeah, so, so this is the inside of the subway right, so, that they're showing right so here. So that is, in <laughs> fact, where the title uh, came from, which is, I Miss My Daily Commute on the L Train. <laughs> and, and what a great way to, like, address the pandemic without being, you know, really maudlin about it, you know? Um, so we'll see how this works. Now, This I don't know if I'm expecting oh, you to no, like wait a this. second. With a weeded... Whiskey right before it. This is going to be amazing. Okay, all right. Well, I don't it's going to be you know, with the spice and everything I that always, we had in the weeded. This I, is going to be so I good together. I always worry about you with the double IPAs. Oh, 
because you're because you're not an IPA guy, and sometimes they can be. A oh, little, I was so right. A little hot. Oh my god! But it goes great, huh? It's yeah. So where do we get a- this? <laughs> That's the only question I have. Because like well, I took the one drink, and now it's just like it's please, over. Yeah, please if God, don't email yeah. me and tell so, me it's all sold out. <laughs> FYI, um, very weeded bourbons and rye bourbons go very well. Oh yes, with this, IPAs this and especially marries, double IPAs. This marries very very well. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's delicious. Yeah. Uh, um, it's got it's got a little bit of uh, citrus to it, but it doesn't, and maybe it's the mm. combination with the whiskey. But it, it doesn't have a lingering citrus no. bitterness to it. No, though. not at all. Mm-hmm. It's got a quicker finish and a little dankness on the end. Does it um, say what the percentage is on the Yes, eight point five. Eight point five. You're in my territory that's, now, buddy. That's high for an IPA. <laughs> I mean, IPAs are generally seven to eight. But it is a, it is a double, so those can venture into the eight and a half uh, range. So um, yeah, eight and a half uh, by volume, double dry, double India Pale Ale hops, Citra, uh, Syria, Zero, Cryo, mm-hmm. Cryo, C R Y O, Cryo, Cryo. Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, you know, and Citra. Uh, it says keep refrigerated, drink fresh. Uh, this is absolutely delicious. This is one of the better IPAs I think I even know of. It's uh, it's really a different, almost like a different approach to me to IPA. It's like, very New England. Yes, it's very New England, but it's but it's got I don't know it's kind of got a flavor all its own. I will say this: the I think the Evil Twin uh, Brewers I think they're genius. Like the beers they come up with on an ongoing basis and how different they are. These guys do a lot of IPAs. Yeah. They. Almost everything they do, I think, is limited uh, limited release. Now, if you're in New York, maybe you can let me know that they have some standards. The ones we've had on the show have all been uh, limited release, and this is maybe the fourth or fifth of theirs that we've had. But, man. I would guess, if you're going to find this in town, and I don't know this for sure, but I'd say probably D&W Mart would have it. Mm-hmm. If, if anybody has it, that's where you'd find it. Have you been there? Oh. You yeah. got <laughs> you gotta yeah. go to that place. It, 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 it be, that look on your face. It's, I, like, I just, yep. it's like a toy store for beer lovers. Yes, it, it really mm. is. You, it, it's one of those things. Like, and I do this with cigars. Like, if I'm buying anything other than beer, spirits, or cigars, I'm in the store. I grab what I want, and I'm out. Yeah, it's on. Uh, it's on Richmond between the downtown spur and Montrose. When, oh, okay. And when I go in there, I'm in there. And for it a just long looks time. like a convenience store. Yeah. It's just in this little bitty convenience store. Go there. If you're store in that area, shop. go there. And then stop by Pit Room. Because uh, yeah. at Pit Room Barbecue, they have like the best brisket. Oh, um, By the way, back and forth with these is mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, it really is. So, yeah, you, you might check there for Evil Twin, or you can go to eviltwinbrewing.com and, uh, and check out where you can buy. I think a lot of places, they've relaxed some of the restrictions about shipping beers across state lines now. So a lot of places you may be able to find... Uh, some places that will ship to you, which is a pretty cool thing. Man, these two are so good together. That really <laughs> is good. All right, we're going to take a break while we uh, enjoy going back and forth with these just a little bit more. When we come back, some drinking news, and what are we tasting next from your lovely selection here? Rum and rye. Rum and rye is next. <laughs> it's smoking and toasting, and we'll be right back. Really good. I had to I had to say it like that just for you, Adam. Rum and rye. <laughs> Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. It's the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. Beginning. So nice to have you guys on board for uh, show number one hundred and ninety-five. We are uh, thrilled to have Jessica Kearns from Barrel in the studio, and uh, she's making great uh, sound effects over there for us with the uh, with the bottles. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, don't hide that. Put that right up on the mic and do that. Well, as much as we enjoyed the IPA and. Um, the uh, batch twenty five together. I think it's a perfect time now for drinking news. Drinking <laughs> news. Now it's time, time for drinking, drinking news. news. Until Ian does us a musical open. This is, for that. This is his pressure to make. I've, me I've like been watching the show. I know. Oh, okay, okay. I, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Right. I'm, I'm up to date with with what's going on here. With drinking news. I'm going to have Adam go ahead and post the photo uh, as I begin to read the. Drinking news story. Drinking news, by the way, is is not always, although it is sometimes, about drinking. But even when it's not, it's I that, love that, when that, drinking news starts with the phrase "a Florida man." Yeah, yeah. Well, this is <laughs> that's always the best. <laughs> this week's drinking news starts with this sentence: "This may not be the best design for a bottle." No, 
<laughs> right. A bar in Connecticut has pulled a beer from its lineup after customers complained that the bottle looked like a Ku Klux Klan hood. According to the beer's brewer, however, the bottle was actually de designed to denounce racism. It's yellow belly beer. Can you see the photo, Ian? I do. Uh, it's yellow belly beer. So here is here is the post. This this uh, photo that you're looking at was taken from a, <laughs> so, a social media post. And here's what the person says. This is the $40 bottle of beer that was promoted and presented to my black husband and his, and his white friend tonight at World of Beer. After researching it at home, we discovered that it was, quote, created to denounce racism, promote open-mindedness, packaged in paper deliberately to denounce organizations like the KKK, end quote. She goes on to say, none of this was explained to Damien or his friend. The KKK bottle was brought over without warning about its appearance. At best, the server was ignorant, insensitive, and tone deaf. At worst, yeah. Uh, so, so there you go. That's, um, I, I believe that the bottle design has been changed. It, but it goes to show how tricky some of these things can be. Yeah. If what the brewery is saying is true, uh, which we'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe it is, um, it's a tough thing to just put out there without a full explanation because people are going to look that's at it the, and go, That's the problem. What? The problem is with no context. Right, exactly. Yeah, and context is everything, as the, we know. The Yellow Belly beer is made by Swedish brewery Omnipolo, and Buxton Brewery in the U.K., according to the Hartford Courant. Uh, but apparently it was brought over uh, to the person in this you know, particular uh, illustration uh, without any ex explanations or warning. I mean, can you imagine somebody just delivering that beer to your table? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, I can see... Uh, I, so I can see that maybe the beer company... We'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that. Maybe the beer company was going for as polarizing as they can. Mm -hmm. Or uh, like the heavy irony, you the, know. The brewery d explains, by the way, that it's called Yellow Belly, and that would be defined as a person who is without courage, fortitude, or nerve, a coward. Yes. They go on to say to us, one of the most cowardly deeds is to act anonymously, hiding behind a group, a signifying trait of institutionalized racism. This beer is brewed to celebrate all things new, open-minded, and progressive. A peanut butter biscuit stout with no biscuits, butter, or nuts. Taste, enjoy, and don't be prejudiced. World of Beer, by the way, the bar in question, has uh, pulled the beer from further sale. But uh, I just feel like there has to have been a better way of translating that message. Well, maybe, like, I, I don't know. Just... Maybe every bottle needs to come with a little, you know, a little uh, bottle hanger on it that explains. I mean, because you just can't charge out there. Right. Like, yeah, there's, that's a tough no one. no context. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's, you know, and I, so I thought, you know, uh, this, especially in the supercharged time that we're living in mm -hmm. right now, where people are, let's just say, a little bit on the edge about this issue from all sides, right? So, yeah, it's a kind of a bad time to not have context if if that is what you're really trying to say. Well, by the way, if that wasn't what they're really trying to say, And as we generally them. know, uh, if you put something out there that can be taken taken in an ironic or funny way and a really, really bad way that the general public is almost never picking the ironic and funny <laughs> way. <laughs> That's never. absolutely true. And the press is never, never picking, yeah, ever yeah. picking well, the ironic and funny know, way. A lot of comedians so, have talked about this. I'll give them late. the benefit of the doubt on that, um, and I can see the irony in it, but yeah, maybe in bad taste, maybe just not the right to too close to home, too, yeah, too yeah. soon. Too soon, yeah. Perhaps, <laughs> yeah no. perhaps so. A lot of comedians have talked about this, though, that it's getting so much harder for them to do comedy because everyone is so on edge about so many different issues, and comedy always has a bit of uncomfortableness or awkwardness in it when, you, when comics kind of step close to the line on things. Even Jerry Seinfeld, who you don't think of as an edgy comedian, says he won't play college campuses anymore. Because of the fact that that people seem to be so on edge about things and find find things in his routine to get mad about. No, no, everybody. Like, I, okay, let me not say everybody. The general public, and I can see college campuses being a real hot spot for this. But a lot of people are looking for a way to be a victim, right? And that's just it. I'm offended by this. Even if it has nothing to do with you, I'm offended by the fact that someone else might be offended by it. Still. That's I'm, super hot. That's called PC. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. 
but still, I'm I'm still not ordering the beer that comes in the KKK. And I'm waiting no. for PC to not be a name for something because politically correct is also going to offend politicians eventually, and they're not going to want to call it politically correct. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they're going to have to come up with a new name for it, whatever right. it is. Well, that's Because that's happens. going to happen. That's what happens. A word is a description, but then people take that description and use it in a disparaging way, and then that word becomes not okay anymore. Uh, you think about the mentally challenged, right? People used to use the word retarded. Well, retarded as a word isn't any more, just as a word by itself, it isn't any more disparaging than mentally challenged. It simply means that the growth was not allowed to continue to a particular place. A, uh -huh. The growth of you know, the brain or whatever it was was retarded in this case. But because people took that and used it in a derogatory, derogatory yeah. way, it became really uncool and, and not a, an acceptable thing to say that. And so we moved to... A, a, a different phrase, and eventually that will be used in a derogatory so way. So I teach, and we won't use I teach that. music to kids. Yeah, and when I tell them at the end of the song, sometimes they need to retard. The first time I ever say that to a kid, they yeah. think I'm saying a bad word. Right? right? No, that's absolutely you right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of them giggle. Some of them, uh, but some is, of them are just like awestruck. <gasps> like, what? You, you just said that? It, but it like, is in fact a musical description yeah it of, means yeah. to slow down right exactly and that is what happens at the end of dun 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 that's a retard you and that's what it is that's a musical term you see why we call this drinking news because you can't talk yeah. about stuff like this unless you've got <laughs> a drink in your hand you really can't but uh so you know we don't, we don't like to ever really make the show political or take a political stance one way or the other but it's always interesting to talk about these things and uh and you know just i'm just going to go ahead and step out on a limb here and recommend yeah don't don't order one of these beers if you're out any place don't don't it's just not a it's just not a good idea yeah they need they need to do something about the packaging because <laughs> that's not that's yeah. not gonna work no that's not, gonna not work. No, cool. honey, no let's talk about some whiskey shall we or, or is that where we going whiskey, whiskey first? first yeah whiskey first okay <laughs> and is do i need to pass some of these yes, over that okay. one this one, well, one and of those two. One of those two and one of these and two. One of okay, these two. gotcha. All right, so Jessica, where are we headed here, taste wise? We're doing rye first. Oh, rye, very nice. So this is the third batch of rye from Barrel Rye. Um, okay. It smells light and spicy. Ian, where where do you come down on rye in terms of like when you come down hard on it? When you're looking for when you're looking for whiskey though, what what are the I'm chances? I'm unforgiving that, on my bottles of rye. What is, what are the chances that a rye is going to be your choice? Uh, you know, I like rye. Uh, rye's a mood thing, and rye for uh, for mixed bourbon mm -hmm. drinks is is my absolute one, number one choice when it comes to like a, a old fashioned or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, well, you, you know, we talk about this all the time that one of the secrets of the success of Whistle Pig was uh, him guessing correctly that this was going to become a thing, mm -hmm. and and just kind of charging in boldly at a time when rye really wasn't selling all that well. And they almost like blew the doors down and made it a category that everybody said, "Oh, we better develop a rye now. Rise, rise a thing." You know, um, this is really good. My mom makes it's a uh, mocha cake. Yeah, and this tastes like that with whiskey. Mm. <laughs> like the the chocolate note in here is so big. I get like less chocolate, so more round. like a cocoa powder. Like it's okay. got like kind yeah, of a I chocolate, but kind of a. Uh huh. It's still a little dry, more like a spice or an herb kind of if feeling I were, to it. If I were being one of those, you know, pretentious reviewer types, I'd say cacao nibs. There you go. You just one upped me on that. <laughs> like, I was I was gonna mess with her about it, but now it's your turn. So. Be, yeah, I took his chocolate and tried to be that. Yeah. I see your chocolate, and, then, and I raise you cacao, cacao nibs. Cacao nibs. <laughs> Um, Either way, this is a, uh, a <laughs> it's chocolate rye bomb. Absolutely delicious, go. isn't it? Yeah. Either it, way, it, good does, right or wrong. it does have a wonderful chocolatiness. So yeah. let's let's go ahead and just crush what both of you said. If you've ever had a malt and you get that little mm. bit of malt crushed up in there that didn't d didn't that get, didn't quite get blended blended, you get that little grainy maltness, right? And it's just it's dry in the middle and goes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's delicious. That's what that's happens awesome. in this. Do you remember um, like? Nestle's quick malt flavor and and what was the malt maltine yes. was that what it was called that you could oh. make you oh, could Maltine. mix it in, 
Was it Ovaldi? It, you would mix it in there milk. There was also it Malto make... milk. Remember that oh, one? Malto, Malto milk, milk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember that from being are a we kid. old? We are very old. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, believe this or not, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time when if you wanted chocolate milk, you didn't just go to the store and buy a jug of chocolate milk. You oh, and there was no such thing as strawberry right. milk. Oh, no. You had to mix it yourself. You had to get the necessary There wasn't quick. even strawberry Remember, quick yeah. at, at oh, one point. Like, I remember when it came out. Right. You're right. So I want to point out. I remember out, fondly when it came I out. I want to point <laughs> out, if you've ever watched a Christmas uh, a Christmas, Christmas story, story yeah. and you see the way that life is. I grew up in that generation right after that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. So I get all of that. Mm-hmm. I love right. that story. Mm-hmm. It's close to home. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's delicious. That that really is. It's so drinkable. Is what I would say. Of all of the things that we've tasted up to now in your line here, this would be the one that I could see sitting and sipping on all night, as opposed to well, just the, taking the taste. The of, more you know? things out of my magical <clears throat> black bag that you drink. The easier they get to drink. <laughs> That's good to know. It's, it's just the nature you, of the game. You do we have a magic. You're invited to any party I have <laughs> ever. I really want. I want to get it like sanctioned. And and this is me begging you, Joe and Will. I want my rep bag, which has a nice little barrel logo. It's a super nice bag. Um, I want it to look like a Felix the Cat bag. Oh. And be like bright yellow, sneak a little bourbon, a barrel bourbon logo in there. But I wanted to have like the X's and O's on it, like a Felix the Cat bag. Because that's what I feel like when I go around <laughs> with this bag everywhere. I'm like, you're not going to believe the magic that's in this bag. So Let's go. For nice. those of you who are under about 35. Oh, you don't know who Felix the Cat Felix is? Felix the Cat bag would just I be. I just aged myself, didn't uh, I? Well, I'm just saying it, it's it's a thing. And go research it because you'll right. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, look it up. Yeah, go Go Google Felix the Cat. So Rye 3 is 4 to 14-year-old barrels, mm-hmm. by the way. Um, it is Tennessee, Indiana, Polish, and Canadian ryes. What does this sell for? Um, it's line priced with the bourbon batches, so mm-hmm. 85 to 95 usually. Did and you say how, Polish? How hard is Polish. it to find? Interesting. Shouldn't be very hard. Shouldn't be hard it's to find. the first okay. time I've heard that one referring to mm-hmm. rye whiskey. Polish? Mm-hmm. Really? Do the Polish We have a like lot rye? of Polish ryes in our rye oh. portfolios. And or we it, use a lot of Polish. So what does it mean to be a Polish Then maybe it's rye? the first time I paid from attention Poland. to so it. So like the, the, the juice was actually mm-hmm. comes from comes from Poland. Okay. I don't know if you noticed this, but this has been messing with me for the entire show, by the way. This thing flickers and makes Oh, noise. I'm sorry. I should have turned it, it off. It does what? Um, it, it'll light up to oh, remind me to drink. it lights up when you take a drink? Oh. No, to remind me to drink. Oh, it's just like to remind you to drink mm-hmm. water? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden it's like, Lights. And you notice every time it happens, I pick the bottle up instinctively because out of the corner of my eye, I can see it. And, and it's that's, your reminder, that's like the if you're not point. drinking enough water right. or whatever. It's the whole point of this this whole water bottle contraption. So let me ask you this: If I got one of those and I filled it with whiskey, could I still it have will it light remind up you to, to drink remind whiskey? Me to yes. drink whiskey? Okay. Um, it'll remind you to drink whatever's in here. Um, okay. White Claw fits in it. You can fit exactly two cans of White Claw in there. Just by the mm-hmm. way. Not that I know. From you know, we haven't done our. We were going to do our uh, hard seltzer tasting show. Yes, well, we, we talked about that. doing a blind taste test for hard seltzer. Or but it sounds like we have maybe a third party to come in on that. Oh, I would I love to. So, so I love you, me some hard seltzer. So like, you as, like okay? As opposing, <laughs> and so, how, I feel like that is the opposite end of the spectrum for what I do. Right. Like at Barrel Bourbon, we're on the luxury end of it just got basic bourbons in here. and rise yeah. and and all that, <laughs> and then like. When I am done with work and I'm I'm my kids are in bed and I I'm just gonna drink something and play video games, I'll get like a pickle beer from Martin House out yeah, of the fridge yeah. if I have some or a White Claw or a Corona I just saw that pickle seltzer. beer too, the uh, best made one. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so good. It's my favorite thing with a yeah. salt strip on it. Oh. It has a salt strip on it. No, no, no. I buy the salt strips. Oh, really, okay. I was say. That's my way of enjoying it. Is is you'll see me like lick the can with like no class whatsoever, <laughs> <laughs> and then drink the beer. So, so I really think we should have you come back when we do, because because we've been talking about threatening to do this, yeah, to do this yeah, for, a that one for a to while. To just do a blind seltzer, a uh, 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 hard seltzer. Blind taste test. Get a lot of the different brands, a lot of the different flavors. Kind of, uh, kind of taste them blind, and then and then rate them because it, it has become such a thing. It's huge, and there are it's there so are hot two right completely now. diametrically opposed viewpoints on hard seltzer. There's the people that love it and and are you know feeling about it the way you're explaining, and then there's like the stone brewing side over here where they're like, that's not real, uh, that's not real, that's that's crap, you know. 
And so it's it's a uh, and I, I understand that it's crap and I, I appreciate that and um, so is and that's fine. It's, it's hard seltzer for I, you. It's, like it's they're Gilla still going to get my money. Sugar. Like it, it's so hard seltzer for you is kind of like watching reality TV. You right. know it's not. I know good it's entertainment. scripted. I yeah, know it's right. bad. I yeah. know it's like. I, I know that Flava Flav did not really want to marry that model for the third time. <laughs> like, I get a, that, but what like. What a great specific example. <laughs> I get that, but at the same time. Did you guys watch the roast of Flavor Flav, by the way? No, oh, it was is amazing. It worth it? Oh, <laughs> amazing. Oh, so good. But, but I'll still, in, when I'm in the store and I'm passing through all the stuff and they have this big case stack with some obnoxious surfing whatever <laughs> display i will grab a 12 pack or a 16 pack of whatever seltzer it is. Do, do you have a favorite brand a, a 12 um, or a 16 pack yeah you notice, well, like, some of them i'm not gonna try one sizes. no yeah. I'm, I'm gonna like, try I 16 the well, they, they do mix packs you get pineapple right. and you raspberry get, you and get like yeah. two of each flavor or something in each of them um my favorite, I guess, would be either the Trulies or the White Claws. I just mm-hmm. feel like the flavor is better with those. What um, about the Bud Light Seltzer? Have you tried that? It's not bad. It's yeah. not my favorite, but it's not bad. It kind of feels it, like an afterthought. Like, does uh, it taste by Bud Light like Bud Light? It doesn't taste like Bud Light. So but why like, the hell do they call it Bud Light? Because it's made by the people with Bud Light. Well, yeah, but Bud Light's a flavor. So it's like your husband right. drinks Bud Light, you drink the seltzer. Like oh, you, you go think hand that's in what hand. I don't know. For? I have no. no idea. No. I don't work for them. I just think it's another flawed <laughs> AB marketing move. Like, well, people buy Bud Light, so we'll call it Bud Light Seltzer. Well, there's a Corona one too. But it doesn't oh, that, taste anything like Corona, well, which that, which made me a little bit sad because I bought specifically bought the lime Corona seltzers, and it was you were thinking it might have a little. I thought it was going to be like a a really carbonated Corona with right. lime. So I want to point out that first off, the people that don't buy Corona because of the coronavirus are idiots. <laughs> um, I know Adam, my producer, has bought it. Complete specifically idiots since the. But I've uh, never actually personally been a fan of Corona yeah, I know in the first place. Fan, yeah. Like I just right. don't like that beer. If I'm going to go Mexican beer, I go Tecate. There you go. I'm, just, I'm not a big fan of most of those. Like but the Tecate has to be in a can. It has to, to be me. super, super cold. Super cold in a can, or you just can't do it. I like, can drink just about any beer super, super cold, with some malt liquor ex- exceptions. Yes, Thank but you. um. And the right place in the right time does make a difference, but um, yeah, I've never been a fan of Corona beer. Well, if so. you're having a plate of enchiladas at Chewy's, a cold, ice cold Tecate. And Modelo's way better than that. Well, Modelo's good. I agree. I, and I, I still don't I, like Modelo all that much. I think it's better. Sure. I, I, if you're going Negro Modelo. Negro Modelo is definitely better. But ne- the, Negro Modelo is, is bordering on being an actual good beer. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> with a lime in it, it's not that bad. I know I, you're not a big I lime I don't harm your limes when I'm drinking. I, I, like, I, know, I find I that know. to be weird. I know. I get it. And the twang stuff? Oh, no. Don't, don't give <gasps> really? me a Really? Not at all. <sighs> That's I have to me. fix beers sometimes. So and I guess that's maybe... One of the funniest moments I had, I was up at... Uh, up at uh, uh, what's the one on Westheimer, the Bourbon Bar now? It's um, totally blanking on the name. I, I'm not sure. Uh, it's been so long I'll since I've been to a bar. I don't remember. Right, what I'll think of it. Called. I'll think of it shortly. <laughs> but they have they have like one of the biggest bourbon selections mm-hmm. in town, and it's on Westheimer there. Um, I know Anvil, and I know some of the other places, but that's but not anyway, I was in there, and I I realized that I knew the bartender. I used to bartend it. Uh, he used to bartend over it. Rudyard's, and I was sitting there chatting with him, and this girl comes up, and she asks for uh, Corona or Dos Equis or something like that. He's like, we don't have that. And she goes, what do you have? And he goes, we got Lone Star. She goes, okay, I'll take two of those. So he goes over to his his uh, area, you know, cooler, and grabs two Lone Stars and puts, you know, the, um, the, the napkin around it and puts them up on the thing, and he turns around to go back and do whatever he's doing. And she's standing there, and she's tapping her way over the long fingernail on the top of her Lone Stars like this and just staring at him. Now, me and my wife are sitting here looking at her and looking at him and looking at her, and he looks back over at her, and he looks back over at her, and he walks over. He's like, can I help you? And she goes, can I get a lime and salt with this? With a Lone Star? With a Lone Star, <laughs> really? I've and I'm never, looking at I mean, to each their own. I'm, I'm like, I've never uh, even thought about having lime with a lunch. Like, oh. And he's like, 
okay, and he walks over. I mean, I'm guessing she had this attitude of, like, that is the customary way of drinking it. He just dumps some salt, which is lime in there. Why would you have not? Why did you not dress it? And he hands it back to her, and she's got a little attitude, and he goes, Good luck with that. And he walks <laughs> off. It's like, it was a beautiful moment. It was a beautiful moment. <laughs> like, like truly what was. an awkward customer. <laughs> like, but the whole just tapping it, like expecting the salt and lime. Like, well, what? to our to fun. our friends out there who are bartenders and servers, I know you'd all take being back with those awkward customers right now. So it's tough. Yeah. Stuff out there. Uh, let's take a break, and we'll be back for our final segment. We are going to uh, do one more beer. It's a uh, it's a combination mm. of imperial stout and barley wine. That is Yay. from our friends at Anchorage <laughs> Brewing. And you got something else for us to taste, don't you? I have rum. Oh, we didn't we, do the rum, right? We, we like rum. We'll do Am it when I we lost? come back. It's uh, yeah. it's smoking and toasting, and we'll uh, be right back. Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 195. Smoking and Toasting, all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars, where, by the way, all music is used by permission. Thank you. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It is a wonderful thing. Uh, a recent Business Insider video interview featured three experts on the Cuban cigar industry. One of them, a man named Mitchell Orchant, said this about Cuban cigars in the United States. He said, There's just so many fakes around in the U.S. You can't buy Cuban cigars and get them shipped into America. It's illegal for the Americans. And therefore, I don't know where they're buying from. Unscrupulous people, perhaps. Maybe the fake situation has declined a little bit since Obama opened up that you could travel, purchase Cuban cigars, and bring them in personally if you've been on holiday somewhere. But, you know, I think you could bring, bring up to $800, he says, I think. And above that, you can bring in whatever you want and pay a very small amount of duty. So it may have approved slightly. But I would still say that probably 95% of the cigars that are supposed to be Cuban cigars that I've observed, quite simply, are very bad fakes. So if you've tried Cuban cigars and didn't think they were that great, that could be the reason. You could be ah. smoking a, a knockoff, you know? Not, There's that. Not a Cuban at all. So, But I thought, the, the reason I wanted to share this is I thought, if you told me 50%, I'd have gone, yeah, I'm sure that's true. 95% is a very big number. That's a big number. That means you've got a less than 1 in 10 chance that the Cuban cigar your buddy gave you is actually a Cuban. I choose to believe otherwise. Yeah? I choose to believe that it's got to be better than 95%. I don't know. It's a big number. It's a big number. It's a big number. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting, ladies and gentlemen. We are so thrilled uh, to have... Uh, uh, the return to our studio of Jessica Kearns. Jessica's one of our absolute favorite guests. I mean, she's up there in the rarefied air with, I don't know, Alan Denny. Who who else can I think of? Like who? Uh, one of our favorite. guests. I don't know if I love being put in the same group with Alan Denny, or if that's like a complete, you know, it's like a, offense, it's a, like a dubious honor at best. Right, like, <laughs> take it as a dubious honor. That's how you should take it. Uh, no, Jessica's one of our, our favorite guests, and and not only do we love the uh, the spirits, but it's just, it's just really fun having you on the show. Nice. Uh, thank you for being here. We have some rum to taste, and Ian, I believe, has uh, has opened up. Have you shown that bottle to the? I have, uh, I have not. I think you should because it's such a, a, a unique and interesting bottle. This is from. Uh, a brewery that we've featured a number of their things, although oh, looks like we've death. had a tendency to feature primarily their IPAs on the show before. And it's uh, it's a brewery from Anchorage, Alaska called Anchorage Brewing Company. It looks so good. This is called Endless Ending. It is a barley wine and imperial stout blend. And it's a very interesting bottle, which Ian's going to show us here. Uh, so the bottle was four. dipped in a white wax. So you can see that like on the front of wax. it. I'm going to describe, because you'll have to look for it when I hold it up to the camera, is uh, is a human skull behind each ram that are butting heads. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's <clears throat> interesting, because barley wines are very big, and uh, stouts, uh, imperial stouts, are obviously very big. So I think that's why they're they're referring to two very strong right. styles. Two very strong styles, kind of butting heads in, in, the this, same, uh, in this particular. Box. Now, Ian, have you ever had a stout and barley wine blend before? Didn't we just have one a couple weeks ago? I think, maybe we, I think did we, we did, maybe? yes. Yeah. So we have, yes. As a matter of fact, um, oh. Uh-oh, what are you thinking? That was, 
I'm pleasantly surprised. I thought it was I was not gonna like it that much because it's so dark, and a lot of times it's really hit or miss with with so you're very not very dark. Necessarily a, a fan of the super. Age, I, I was concerned it was gonna be like a Guinness months, kind of thing and right. experience, and I'm not a fan of that. Age 18 months in Woodford Reserve, double oaked barrels, 15.5 percent. <laughs> well, it's not barrel, but it. You know, Holy moly. It's okay, I'll, I'll accept that. <laughs> Woodford, Woodford Reserve is respectable, it's, it's right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. So the the raisiny and well, it is all the, raisin the and date. Raisin and date flavor you get in there is definitely the barley wine influence mm-hmm. and the sweetness. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's all barley wine all the way. I will say that this, I expected it to, the mouthfeel to be a little thicker with it having imperial stout in its. I blood. don't know. It's pretty thick. Yeah, maybe. Um. Your take, sir. There's a little, uh, there's a little coffee flavor, espresso mm-hmm. flavor on the very end. That's definitely the stout influence. Mm-hmm. But this I is, taste more barley wine than stout, though I have to say it's it's barley wine all up front and then stout on the finish back, yeah. with a barley wine sweetness. Is it too sweet for you, or you or you like it? Hell no, I love barley wines. Is it too carbonated for you? No, it's not very carbonated. Mm. I'm not getting a lot of carb out of it. For me, I want like some ice cream. Yeah, this would be amazing on to, ice cream. To yeah, to put some so make a root beer it, float, but a beer float. This is like a barley wine with a, a bitter stout finish. Yeah, which is good. really good. It really works. Which for makes it. sense. I think it's delicious. Makes sense given what it is. Um, it's would you say fifteen point five? Fifteen five. Yeah, it's very boozy. It's big. Yeah, and it's boozy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I am going to say though, are we tasting rum with this because that's probably going to go yeah. really well. <laughs> We're going like the other end of the spectrum here. Um, maybe we have, maybe we should have a palate cleanser of some sort. I have a water bottle. I didn't bring everybody a water bottle though. I tell you what, if you want, I can go get a summer oh, yeah. pills. That doesn't go together at all. <laughs> uh, so what Wait. about this? I'll go get a summer pills. We've got a St. Arnold summer pills in the fridge. That'll that'll serve as a palate. Oh, cleanser. is there still some more of the low dome? There's or a not the low dome. Uh, well, try try a little bit of that. There's a little more of that left. Just pour that um, into those little. Uh, oh, I have a little there. in a glass oh, I'm here, good. so I I'm going to pass it on. Water. Okay. I actually so have some here. There. Here, hand me one of those paper cups, Ian. Mm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll do. We'll do a little. I think these two things are good separately. I don't. Yeah, I don't they, know they that fight we paired, each other. I tried that rum right afterwards. I think. And it was, I think we paired the rye well with the beer unknowingly, yeah. but well, not. Sometimes we not pair vice well, versa. and sometimes we don't. It, it just it happens. But <laughs> you didn't let um, me try the beers and see if they paired with my stuff. I could have. I could have planned a little better here. Um, sometimes so, we just don't know, you know. So what I have? No, it needed is the power. The, uh, it needed the palate cleanser. That mm-hmm. makes a big difference. Yeah. What I have is a private release of rum. Okay. So this is a Barbados blend, mostly Barbados. Ninety percent of it is a Barbados rum, and then it's finished in Malmsey Madeira barrels. And so this is going to be different than the rum finished that we had the last time you were on, correct? Madeira. Oh, okay. Malm- it's specifically Malmsey Madeira. Malms- okay, so Malms- how I, boozy I, is I know this? I'm going to save it wrong. Why does Malmsey Madeira sound like a Tyler Perry character? I don't know. I didn't think of that until you said that. I was not prepared for that question. Oh, yeah, yeah, knock, Thanks, knock, 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 knock. The door I'll opens. Never. Oh, it's Momsy Madeira. <laughs> I'll never get that image out of my head. Oh, God. Uh, oh, man. How boozy is this? Because this tastes way overproof. Um, It's 127. Proof. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to finish out strong. You got to yes. finish out strong. Wow. Yes. I mean, when we when we're drinking a beer that's fifteen five, you might as well go at one hundred and twenty. Holy moly! Fruit. Wow. It's big. It's actually really good. It's also got that. It uh, needed the palate cleanse though. It's got that rubber, uh, rubber funk Did to it. You say it, it was that, Barbados? Okay, so Barbados. Yeah. In my experience, Barbados and Jamaican rums are the most likely to have that what you described as a rubbery. Uh, funkiness. It's not unpleasant at all. In no, fact, no, I really not, like it. Not by any means. But, Don't let but those terms turn you off. You're it's most just likely to get that from rums that are uh, Barbados or Jamaican, I think, in origin. That's been my yes. experience. But no, this is quite good. In fact, I think I may like this even better than the last rum we had. Do you remember what the last one I brought you was? Was it just no. finished in bourbon? I think it was, yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it mm. would have either been a, a Barbados or a Jamaican forward finished in bourbon. I mean, so I'm this not, one is finished in something I, else. I'm not saying this is boozy, but I think the glass is getting a little thinner down here by the bottom. <laughs> it may it may very well oh, be I the could case. Have brought, I could have brought some uh, Canadian rye. Oh, it's, yeah? It's uh, 151 proof. <laughs> Holy, Holy moly. Toledo. Yeah. It was 
probably the though. best Canadian rye I tasted out of everything that we had um, at in Kentucky, and I picked it for a store here in Houston, and it like nearly immediately sold out. I bet. Wow. So good. Though. This is such an interesting rum because it has it has that classic rum spice on the very tail end of it. Mm-hmm. It has that that rubbery funk that's kind of interesting and I can't stop drinking it. Like this is one of those things where you take a sip and you're like, "Hmm, let me think about it." And then you find that you're at the end of the glass thinking about it. It's very interesting. Yeah. I hear you. It's hot though. Ooh. Yeah. The best thing ever. And I don't like to tell people the best thing is to make a cocktail with it, but literally you will you will drink down the whole cocktail and not know that you drank a whole cocktail. So you um, could make a mojito with this then. You can make a mojito. I made daiquiris, like very simple. I could picture this with, with just a, like lime juice, a couple cherries. Oh, I could picture it. picture this with like a coconut daiquiri. Oh, you and could do watch that. it be amazing. Yeah, I'm and liking this, this is, idea. I, I like where this is headed. Right. It's I've made it like a batch cocktail before with a recipe that uh, Nick Christensen, shout out to her, she's our single barrel manager in Kentucky, mm-hmm. she gave me, and it's just, uh, I, I will make a whole, uh, there, it looks like a, a giant mason jar that sits, you know, pretty big, um, probably like five, ten gallons. Well, it's, it's just pouring stuff in and use one or two bottles of the yeah, rum in it. Right. Well, Perfect. it's delicious, but I mean, it, it packs a punch, no yeah. doubt about it. It's got... It's got, what did you say the uh, the uh, alcohol uh, 127 127 127 proof wow that's huge <laughs> that 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 explains and it tastes like it yes it does you, and you what's taste. funny is it's drinkable yeah you like do, but it doesn't I taste keep drinking like, it it doesn't taste like 126 it def, definitely tastes like <laughs> oh, yeah. 127 it's it's all but, every bit of it's there but I absolutely love it I'm gonna tell you this might be one of the favorite rums that we've had on the show. Mm-hmm. Like out of all the rum, and and there's been, I'm not a huge fan of rum, but I like this. This is so interesting, and hot, very <laughs> much as you as as you kind of would say. It's very much a rum for people who are fans of whiskey. I think, you know, if you're, it's like if you like that that sort of stronger approach. If, if rum is too mellow that, for you, but that the rums that you've tried, but the burn, I want to call it a burn because it's a little further than heat. The burn from it's kind of like, uh, you remember when you were a kid, you'd have one of those atomic fireballs, little cinnamon balls, mm-hmm. and it would burn, but you keep eating the dang thing? That's what I'm doing yeah. with this. It's yeah. so yeah. good, and it's so tasty that I can't stop putting it back in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, but, I, but I will say, this is not, you know, you know those rums you have that are so, uh, they're so mellow, you like sip them all night, and then you don't really realize how much you've... Had to drink until the end easily. of the night because it was easily such easy drinking. Yeah, this is not that. No, this no. is you, you know polar from the opposite moment of that. you but you know from the moment you taste this. Yeah, you're dealing with a serious. serious this doesn't have spirit. a whiskey hug. This has a rum slap. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. I like that. You coined a new one today, Ian. See, this this is why we love having you on the show. We coin new phrases. It, all kinds of great things happen. I uh, uh, whenever we have so you the, on the show. Rum the first slap time. Is a little- <laughs> Just to make a whole oh, parody man. of the song. I made that big batch cocktail, right, for an event that I was doing the next day, and I thought, oh, I'll let it sit in the fridge overnight and just let it all marry and the juices and everything blend together, right? And I'll go in and I'll shake it up every once in a while. And I kept catching myself. I had, like, a little glass, and it was actually a little Raising Cane's kids cup that I had stolen <laughs> from one of my children. And I kept going in there, and I'm like, I need to taste test it, Right. And after like the seventh or eighth full little kid's glass, my husband's like, you think you've uh, tasted enough of that? And I was like, no. And then I realized how I had said no and realized it was time for bed. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, thank God I wasn't drinking out somewhere because I, I needed an Uber at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't you love that thought process when you catch yourself and you're drunk? You're like... I just oh. said that very drunkenly. <laughs> that was... <laughs> it's a very slow thought process. That is too. not how you pronounce that word whatsoever. I need to slow down. Or when you realize the story you just told, I just told that two other times tonight. That's right. <laughs> to the same <laughs> to the person. Same person. 
<laughs> and they were so nice. They just nodded. No, and no, no. Wait, no, that's no, not no, what no. I did. No, no, no. Was it? No, no, okay. No, okay. No, no. You don't I understand. got really paranoid that that was the third time I no, told no. that story. No, no, no. no. I'm just you don't understand. From you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, this has been an absolute blast. And Ian, I just want to thank you. I want to thank, first of all, thank. Jessica for being on the show and bringing such, bringing such wonderful stuff. And Ian, I want to thank you because your rum slap B-52's uh, reference <laughs> has now made me feel not bad at all for the vanilla, <laughs> vanilla ice reference <laughs> that I brought up uh, earlier. I was trying fact, to cover up and forget yeah, about the vanilla yeah, ice Yeah, well, I appreciate it. You made me feel better. I'm trying I to cover my shame. Yes, well, I appreciate it. I, and cover mine at the same time. So You know, I, I always thing. enjoy being on the show and... And I'll always come back anytime you guys want me. But one thing that I will never, ever do is give you up. I'll never let you down. Oh, oh, oh we just got Rick rolled. There you go. Yes. I got it in there. Uh, so that, <laughs> if we don't end the show now, it's going to go to a really, really strange place. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the dog toy. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you for coming along for smoking and toasting. And uh, oh yeah, cheers. 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 <laughs> yeah, I I drank all mine. Sorry. I, Virtual I toast. <laughs> <laughs>